everyone! Welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I am thrilled that you are here with me today for another Masterpiece Monday. Today we will be talking about the artist Frida Kahlo and we will be making a self-portrait in her style. Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also if you really like what we're doing here, please share us with your friends. All right, well, let's move on and talk about this famous, amazing artist, Frida Kahlo. Have you heard her name before? Maybe you have seen one of her many self-portraits. She is very well known for those. Well, let's talk a little bit more about her, and then we will get into our work that we are going to be doing in her style. So Frida Kahlo is a Mexican artist and she was known for her paintings of her portraits, as I mentioned, especially her self-portraits, and the paintings that she did of Mexican nature and Mexican artifacts. Her paintings often mix fantasy and realism. So there are elements of real things in her paintings, and there are also elements of the fantastic, or things that are maybe imaginary, or something that isn't quite real. Frida liked doing art as a child, but she didn't want to become an artist when she grew up. She actually wanted to become a doctor. This may well have been because she had polio as a child, and she wanted to be the doctor that could help children just like her. However, when she was 18, she was involved in a very serious bus accident, and she spent several months in the hospital recuperating and healing from that. During those first few months that she was healing, she turned to art to pass the time. And as they say, the rest is history. As she continued to heal, which truly became a lifelong process, she continued to do art, and through that, she cemented herself as a true artist. So today, we are going to take one of her famous paintings and we are going to try to recreate it or at least we're going to use it as the inspiration to make our own self-portrait. The painting that I'm talking about is this one. It's called The Frame, and I'm sure that you can see why. It was done with oil on glass. Obviously, Frida is the focus of this image, but look at the frame and the details that surround her. Aren't they interesting and unique details? So we are going to do our best today to make a frame that surrounds us. And in addition to that, we are also going to make the headband of flowers that sits on top of her head. In order to do these projects, you will need a few supplies. You will need a transparency. This is something that you can get at an office supply store, and there's also a link below to where you can purchase this. You will also need the two printouts that are below this video. You will need the blue printout, which will eventually become the blue background behind you. And you will need this printout that we are going to be able to use our transparency on top of, and we are going to be able to trace all of those fun details that surround Frida and that will surround you. You will also need a picture of yourself or a drawing or painting of yourself in true Frida Kahlo style. If you're taking a picture, I would wait until after we make our flower headband so that you can take the picture of yourself with the flower on your head. So then you can add that to the frame in true Frida Kahlo style. You will also need some Sharpie markers in red, blue, a dark pink, and yellow. If you don't have these, you can also just use a plain black one. That is your call. And then you will need some acrylic paints in red, blue, white, yellow, and black. And because we're painting, it's good to have some water, a paintbrush, and always paper towels when you're painting. You will also need a pair of scissors and some white glue. Of course, you will also need a paint palette. I told you in the past that I use a paint palette where I just keep piling up old paint, and that is what I normally use. I'm going to be using a paper plate today because we're going to be mixing some colors, and I definitely want you to be able to see those colors for what they are and not what's beneath them. Um, for the, uh, the flower headband, you will need several pieces of yellow uh, tissue paper. You'll need a pipe cleaner and a headband. So, let's get started. 
So the first thing that we are going to do is start on Frida's frame. So to do that, take your transparency and place it over the printout that you can find below of all of the images that make up Frida's frame. Once you have it placed on top, then you can take your Sharpies and you can just start tracing it. I have this color coded so you can use the dark pink on the pink, the red on the red, the yellow on the yellow, and the blue on the blue. If you don't have all of these colors of Sharpies, you can just go over all of it with black because truly the colors will come from the paint. And of course, you know, if you decide to use different colored paint, that's okay too. I'm going to stay a little bit truer to Frida's uh, colors, but you could use any color that you want. So you see here, I am just going over all of the lines that are underneath my transparency. This is kind of fun. It's kind of satisfying to watch your, um, your art just make itself or duplicate itself right here. So this is very easy to do. You just continue drawing over all of the lines that you see below. Um, nothing here has to be perfect. You know that's my mantra, right? Nothing needs to be perfect in art. The way that you make it is perfection in itself, right? All right, you can see here that I am tracing the colors of the flower. So here's a cool pink flower and I am just going over the lines. You can go over this in as much detail as you want or you can leave it a little less detailed if you would like as well. Alright, so I think I have all of the pink there. So now I am going to move to the blue and I am going to trace over all of the blue lines. This is a very simple thing to do. It just takes a little bit of time. You might put on some fun music as you do this or you can start thinking about uh, the way that Frida would have, or you can start thinking about what Frida would be thinking as she did the original of this. I think it's kind of fun to try to get into the mind of artists and try to kind of figure out what makes them tick. It's kind of always a fun activity. Okay, so I think that I have all of the blue there. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell. So you can hold it on one side and kind of lift it up and make sure that you've got all of the, the lines drawn there. Of course, if you miss one, that's no big deal. You can always go back and add it later. All right, so now I've got my red and I am just going to go over the red lines here. And you know what? It looks like I accidentally went over one of the red lines with my pink marker. Guess what? Doesn't matter. Kind of cool that way, isn't it? Each one of these are going to be individualized, amazing works of art. Have you ever done a self-portrait before? I think it's interesting that Frida did so many of them. If you do a search, an image search online of her, you will see many, many, many self-portraits of hers. Some of them are more realistic. Some of them, like I mentioned, have that element of the fantastical. It's very interesting. If you were to do a self-portrait of yourself and include images of the fantastical, what would you include? Would you include your favorite like stuffed animals or toys? Would you include your family? Would you include elements of nature? There are so many things that you could include. And obviously the things that you pick are what make you you. So that's an interesting thing to think about too. Why would you include the things that you include? Art is so cool in that way, isn't it? All right, I think I have now all of the red drawn over. Now yellow I find to be the hardest to trace because it's the hardest to see. But again, if you miss one, it's okay. You will either catch it later on in the process and be able to 
trace it then or you won't and you know what then you just make a different a different type of art it's just a little bit different that's okay too right these birds down here are so much fun I think the feather patterns those are such interesting pieces of art why do you think Frida included the birds what do you think it was that called her to the birds all right, do I have all of my yellow? Let me see. I have those little lines there. I think I do. Oh, I don't think I got that circle. All right, now I'm just going to hold it up and see if I can see. You know, the other thing that's really great to do if you don't know if you have it is to place this on a white piece of paper and then you can really see the lines that you have drawn. Okay, I think I am good with that. So now I am going to put this aside. It shouldn't need to dry too much, but it's okay to give it just a couple minutes to kind of settle while you go ahead and paint this other printout, also below this video. And this one, you're just going to take some blue and you're just going to paint in the, you're going to paint in the center here because this is going to be your blue background, just like in Frida's painting. Of course, again, if you decide that this should be a different color, you can absolutely decide that and you can change it up. Color is also a very interesting thing to think about in art. Why do artists use the colors that they use? Maybe people want things to look realistic or maybe they don't. So have you ever colored something that wasn't realistic? Like maybe you've drawn a tiger and colored it purple. Or maybe you've drawn a tiger and you've colored it with orange and black, a very realistic tiger. Why do you think that people do the things that they do in art? I know that's just kind of an ongoing theme in art. There's so much discussion about what is going on in artists' brains. I think that's kind of fun. As an artist, you can kind of keep people guessing about what you're thinking and what's going through your brain or you can be very literal and you can just paint what's going on in your brain that's kind of a fun thing all right so you see here i'm not being super exact i'm getting close to those lines but nothing's perfect right all right i'm almost done here that looks good I'm just going to kind of spread out. I have some glops here. I'm going to spread those out a little bit so that they can dry a little faster. Okay, so once you have your blue done, then you can set this aside and you're going to let this dry a little bit. Then you're going to return to your transparency. And what I'm going to ask you to do is flip it over. You are going to be painting on the back side of this transparency. And at this point, I also then recommend you flipping over your template so you have a white piece of paper to put your transparency on so you can really truly see where you are painting. Okay, so I already have the blue on my brush, so I am going to go ahead and paint in these blue elements of Frida's frame. It won't take very long and you can see that I am not even getting anywhere near perfectly close to these um, to these lines but I am just going to dab some paint on my transparencies here and you can always refer back to Frida's um, original the frame if you want your painting to look very 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 similar to hers or you can just kind of go with the flow and just kind of get it close. Or you can go completely different and you can just paint anything you want, right? You could paint purple in here or green instead of the blue. It's your art. It's your call. That's the best thing about art. All right. So there's not a lot of blue here. So I am almost done. Again, I recommend you refer to Frida's painting if you want to get it a little bit more exact. But the, the outlines, the colored outlines, should help you kind of know where your colors will go. All right, I have the blue down here. And if you go over the line, that's okay, because when you flip it over, you will not see that you have gone over the line 
if you haven't gone way over it. If you've gone way over it, that's okay too, because the fact is that you're using the same color that you used to outline it, so it won't be noticeable at all. All right, so I'm going a little bit thicker with some of this paint because I'm trying to not have too many streaks as I hold it up or as I flip it over. But again, guess what? It's up to you. And the other thing is if you do it kind of streaky and then decide later that you want it a little bit more solid, you can always go back after it's dried and just repaint the colors. Okay, so now I am going to clean my brush. It takes a little bit of scrubbing on the bottom with this acrylic paint. Scrub the bottom and then take a paper towel and dry it off so that you don't have wet, wet, wet um, paint because the wet paint on the plastic will definitely spread in a way that you might not like. All right, then I'm going to take my red, well maybe I am, there we go, and I am going to paint all of the red portions and I'm looking back just to make sure that I kind of know what's pink and what's red here as they get very close to each other, but I, I'm not too worried about being too exact but it's just kind of nice to know what the original looks like before I move on. So, okay, I am painting along this red and I'm trying to stay out of the blue. You can see there I got a little bit of blue on my brush. I didn't mean to. Um, if you want to, you can absolutely wait in between colors here to make sure that you wouldn't have any spreading of the colors, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm much more of a let live and let live kind of uh, kind of artist. If something doesn't quite, you know, work out exactly the way I want, that's okay. I figure maybe it was meant to be the way that I didn't anticipate, right? I'm going to move on to this pinkish purple and to do that I'm going to leave my red as it is and then I am going to take just a tiny bit of blue and then I am going to add a tiny bit of white and I'm going to mix oh a little bit more than I meant to on that white that's okay and I'm going to mix these together until I get the pinkish purple that I want for Frida's pink or for my pink in my painting all right, so I added a little bit more blue because I wanted it a little darker, a little bit more purpley than, than it was. And I think that's a pretty good color. This is really, it's really fun to mix paint because you can just kind of keep going until you get what you want. But I recommend if you want it still to be relatively pink, not adding too much blue into your red. You can see I did a little bit, but not a lot. All right, now I am going to take my pink and I am going to add it into my painting. And again, you can wait for your red to dry, or your red and blue to dry before you go to painting this if you would like. But I am not doing that. I think I'll just be very careful as I go right along those edges. And if a little mixes in, a little mixes in. I am totally cool with that. Now, the thing is that the yellow in Frida's paintings actually is a pretty dark yellow. So I am going to put some yellow on my plate, but then I'm going to put a very, very small dot, at least if I can control it, of black, because I want to darken the yellow, but I also know that black is very powerful, so I'm not going to put much black in there at all. So I just kind of squeezed out a little dot and I just touched the paint. I actually, I think that'll be enough. I know it doesn't look like it's very much, but black is a super powerful color in, in paint mixing. So I wanna be very careful. And yes, I am happy with that black, but you saw it was a very small dot to make what became a pretty dark yellow pretty quickly, right? 
Okay, so I've got that mixed and now I'm just going to go over all of the yellow parts. I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to look at it. I'll use the white. I'm not going to put this down on my white paper because obviously the paint is still wet, but I'm going to use the white paper as a background and look at it. And yes, I am very happy with that. All right, so now I'm going to flip it back so that the wet side is back up and I am going to set that aside and let that dry. And now I'm going to take my blue and I am going to pull that back in front of me, and I am going to look a little bit now at Frida's painting. Now, I couldn't quite tell, and I couldn't quite figure out as I did my research on this painting, exactly what was painted on glass, and if there was an underlayer that she painted maybe on canvas underneath the glass. As far as I could tell, the best that I could tell, and I'm not sure that I was right, everything that we painted here on this transparency was what was on the glass layer on the top. And then beneath it, whether it was another layer of glass or a piece of paper or canvas, it looks like, like her paint, her actual portrait and this blue were below this top layer of glass. So that's how I'm approaching this recreation. I don't know for sure that I'm right, but I think that I can tell that this blue was on something that was below a glass pane. And then it looks to me like there is some yellow in the background that was also below the glass pane, probably on the same layer as the blue. So now I am going to look at her painting and I am going to try to see, trying to recreate that yellow that I think was below this glass piece. I guess I'll just, we'll just all have to go to Paris where this uh, painting is museumed or is in a museum and we'll just have to see it in person for ourselves to know exactly how it is. But that's what I think happened. So I am going to just look here and anywhere that I see Oops, I got a little bit of red in there. That's okay. Um, anywhere that I see this, this kind of like splotchy yellow, I am going to just create or just paint on my paper that has the blue background on it. So this is not exact at all. Can you tell? I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, well, it looks like right about there at the bottom of that blue, there's some yellow and I am just painting a little bit of yellow in. And this you will not see as paint splotches when you put your frame and your um, image in. You will see it just as a part of the entire art. So I think maybe right up here. So I just see, you know, in relation to the blue, where is that yellow? And I am just putting some yellow in. Again, it's not exact and I'm not measuring or anything. I'm just looking at it and saying, yep, that looks like about where there's some yellow. So that's what I am going to use as my background now. I'll put my paintbrush in the water so that it doesn't get hard. And then I am going to put this aside again to dry. So we've got two layers of paint drying and now we get to make our fun tissue paper flower that goes on your head to recreate this painting. So to do that, you will need several pieces of the yellow tissue paper, a headband, and a pipe cleaner. So what I did was I cut out a rectangle of yellow tissue paper. There are several layers here. You should probably use at least six, probably six or seven or eight, somewhere around there. Um, and then this is about the size of a piece of paper. It's a little bit smaller, I think. So probably eight by 10-ish. That's about the right size. Again, nothing's exact here. All right, so once you have your several pieces of yellow tissue paper, you are going to fold it like a fan. Have you ever folded fans? So you fold a lot, you fold a small little rectangle up from the bottom, and then you are going to flip your entire paper, and then you are going to take that rectangle and fold it back. 
All right, then you're going to flip your paper and you're going to fold that rectangle again. So your rectangle stays the same size, but it's getting thicker. So then I'm going to flip again and fold right along that rectangle. Again, flip, use that rectangle as your guide and make another fold. And we're just going to go back and forth and back and forth just like that until we have our entire piece of paper, pieces of paper folded. So there we go. The reason we say a fan is because now it does not look like a fan. All right, but you're going to keep them all folded just like this. And then you are going to take your pipe cleaner and you're going to put, I don't know, two or three inches probably in above um, the above the piece of the fan, let's call it a fan, and it's going to be in the middle of the fan, and then you are going to take this bottom piece, which is a little bit longer, and you are going to wrap it once. That kind of holds everything secure. And then you are going to take that top piece, which is that two or three inch piece, and you are going to just wrap all the way around until you are out of pipe cleaner. So this is what it should look like. And then you're going to kind of open your fan and gently, because this is easy to tear here, but gently you are just going to pull up. Oh, you know what? No, don't do that yet. I totally forgot the step that makes these uh, flower petals look pointed. Okay, so no, we're not gonna fold it up yet. <laughs> this is art in action, absolutely, right? Okay, so we have our fan and it has the pipe cleaner around it. Then we are going to take our scissors and we are going to cut these pieces of tissue paper into points. Now this is a lot of tissue paper to cut all at once. So you don't have to cut it just like I did. In fact, you can see that I wasn't able to cut it very well because there's a lot of tissue paper. So then what you can do is you can take two or three of these folds of fan, folded pieces of fan and you can just cut a point. And then you can come back and you can do the other two or three pieces. Or you know what, you can cut even just one piece at a time but you want it to look like it has a triangle at the end of it. So then you do that on both sides. So I'm just going to cut here. Oh, I got a little bit too much, I think, but I can make it work. All right, and I'm just going to cut it into points, and then I will come over to my other side here, and I will cut it into a point, and then I will cut this part into a point as well. All right, and if it tears a little bit, that's okay. It's not going to show. Okay, now you are going to start unfolding your fan piece by piece. So you take that top piece of tissue paper and you pull it out. And then you take the next piece of tissue paper and you fold and you just kind of gently pull it out. Be gentle, it can tear. If it tears, it's not the end of the world, but um, you don't want it to tear too much. So then you are going to do that with each piece of tissue paper. This takes a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, but you're just going to continue doing that until at the very end, you have a flower that looks very much like Frida's. I'm not going to make you wait as I continue to make my flower. I have one made, so we're going to go ahead and use that. So when you get to this point, you have fluffed both sides, you've pulled each individual piece of paper out of each side, then you can take your pipe cleaner and your headband and you can just wrap your pipe cleaner around your headband. So you see here, I kind of started in the middle of my pipe cleaner and then I am going to just wrap around the bottom half around the, um, the headband and then once I have it secured like that, then I'm just going to take the flower and move it around the headband just a couple times and at this point, you have your Frida flower. Isn't that awesome? All right, so at this point, then you can have someone or ask someone to take a picture of yourself. So if you ask them to take a picture of you, ask them to have your, um, your shoulders right about here at the bottom of the screen, and then make sure that your head is fully in the screen, pretty close, and then you can print the picture of yourself with your headband on in a five by seven size, and then you will get something like this that you can cut out and put into your art. 
So I'm going to go ahead and continue cutting myself out here. Of course, if you don't have a photo or you don't want to have a photo of yourself, you can, in true Frida fashion, just go ahead and paint yourself. I would recommend if you do that, that you paint yourself on a white piece of paper and then cut it out so you can paste it in just like we're going to paste this, uh, this photo in. So I have just gone very quickly around the flower and I just cut a big circle around that. You absolutely can do that if you want it to look a little bit more just like the flower is in the painting. You can then go back in and kind of cut around the petals. That is totally your call, however you want to do it. Obviously, it's a little bit easier to just cut in a great big circle around the flowers. Um, and I think it would look great that way. But if you want it to look a little bit more flowery or bushy, then you can go ahead and cut each individual piece in. I guess right here I'm kind of splitting the difference. I haven't completely cut out all of the petals, but I also um, have cut a few of them out. Okay, so at this point, you are going to bring back your blue and yellow paper and your transparency, which at this point should be dry. If it's not dry, you can wait just a few more minutes or you can get out that famous blow dryer that I often do and you can uh, blow dry it. I just touched this paint, I think you probably saw. It's still a little bit wet, but I'm gonna go with it, at least for our purposes here today. All right, so you have your painting or your picture or your drawing of you, so then you flip it over and put a little bit of glue on it. This will not take a bunch of glue, um, but make sure to get all of those little pieces and edges uh, glued. And then as I look at her painting, I see that she probably goes down just about to the bottom of the blue. And so then I'm going to paste that on my blue and then I am going to flip over my frame and see how I want this. So I like it right about there. So I'm actually going to just place it down and then I am going to gently raise up the transparency and put some glue dots, kind of, not glue dots, dots of glue I guess, kind of in the corners here. Remember that white glue dries clear so you don't need to worry that you know there's white showing through it will dry clear and then you can just secure your transparency there in all four corners so once you have this done you can wait for it to dry that's probably best or you can be like me and impatient and rush it a little bit and then you can just go ahead and cut both of the transparency and the paper together just along this border so that then the only thing that you can see is your beautiful art. There's no white border around it once you've cut this off. So there we go. I've cut three. I'm going to go ahead and just cut this little sliver off as well. I'm just trying to kind of go along the lines of my frame. And there we go. There is my Frida Kahlo inspired frame of Melanie Smith. <laughs> well, I hope that you have enjoyed doing this art along with me today. I would love to see your Frida Kahlo inspired pieces of yourselves. Please ask an adult to take a picture and put those on our Facebook page. I can't wait to see you looking like Frida Kahlo. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have had a ton of fun doing this art with you. I look forward to our Wanderlust Wednesday. I look forward to traveling with you. Until then, please make sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We post fun and wacky and interesting facts there three times a week, just like we do our lessons. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much for talking with me about Frida Kahlo. Thanks for kidding around with me. I will see you next time.